what I left out of the story yesterday about the Austin Bomber is that, okay, so one week I go to this bar and I meet this guy from Oklahoma who's like a Ku Klux Klan guy and it's kind of a weird situation. He's trying to get me to leave with him. And then um, the next week I meet this other guy who's from Oklahoma, but he's wearing a Nebraska hat and he's an explosives expert and he keeps ranting about Austin and he's acting suicidal because he keeps trying to fight this huge guy and he seemed to be with this other guy and um, it was a suspicious situation and more than anything it's that I reported it and next thing you know they caught the Austin bomber and the Austin bomber was a guy that had no idea about how to make bombs because you have to know how to make bombs especially complex bombs and the guy I met that was ranting about Austin an hour away from where the bombings were happening actually there was a bombing that happened in San Antonio um, at the mailing facility at, at the mail at the postal office the distribution facility so um, he bombed San Antonio also uh, and that's where I met this guy all right so the big problem with this whole the government will murder a person to cover up um, one of their people being a terrorist is that it shows lack of integrity in the government and say what you want about me. He says, he says crazy stuff. He, he does this. I will tell the truth. Even if I'm wrong, I will admit it. And I have faced down some really scary situations. And you know, you know what you know about me? If the shit hits the fan, if we have to go to war, who, who do you know is not going to cower in the corner? Who do you know is 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 gonna is gonna step up, and and handle their business? How do you know that? Because after I met the Austin bomber and after and after all this stuff happened, you know what I did? I went back to that bar, because I'm not I'm I'm not a scared person. I went I only went back once, but I, I mean I have I went to class through bomb threats. I had to evacuate one of my class classrooms because someone did a bomb threat on my building while I was taking a test. Plus they did a bomb threat at my work. Plus they had to evacuate my dad's work because there were suspicious packages left there. And so I have been in situations where I have to face fear constantly and I don't back down. And so you can say, Oh, he's a criminal, whatever. Well, I'm a criminal with integrity odd enough. And I'm, I, I, and I'm a forced criminal. It wasn't like a, but let's face it, my whole life I've been a little criminal. Like, I'll, I, I don't care about the law. Like, if, if I'm not hurting you, then why do you care if I break the law in stupid ways? And that, that's why, I mean, if, why does, why does, because the law has always told me I'm not allowed to smoke marijuana. And the law has always told me that I can't do certain things. And I'm always, and I've always believed the government doesn't have a right to control me as much as the government says that they want to control me. All right. So I think. What I'm trying, the point I'm trying to get to is, it's really tr t tough to trust the government, because we don't know if Donald Trump's being blackmailed or has been blackmailed in the past, and now you you're, you stop blackmailing him, and that's why we have Brett Kavanaugh, because who chose Brett Kavanaugh? Why is Donald Trump chose? Like like I said, the people in charge of the government sure seem to have a relationship with Catholic people. They, the, the, like I said, the Kennedys came in, they hired a ton of people that were part of their community and a lot of their friends. You remember the Kennedys had a criminal organization. They were bootleggers. They were, he was, was kind of like, uh, JFK's dad was like Al Capone. So um, they hired a lot of people and that led to a large influx of Catholic people in powerful positions in Washington, D.C., which um, led to back-to-back -back appointments to the Supreme Court going to the same high school. And I think having a relationship with Harvard, everywhere, everyone has a relationship with Harvard. And... Um, and a guy who a lot of us believe is a serial rapist being on the Supreme Court and deciding America's morals. And the reason they chose this guy, Brett Kavanaugh, is because he is so against us because he's a federal judge that has consistently been against us. And the question is, who would have been the most likely group of people that would have had dirt on Donald Trump? It would have been people related to the Obama administration and people that work in, um, Washington, D.C., like at Fort Meade, spying on people. That's my opinion. I might be wrong. Um, and But it sure seems like a lot of people have left their positions since my accusations began. All right. So the big problem with this whole we don't trust Donald Trump, we don't trust the people in charge thing is this. This is the, the spread of coronavirus in the United States over time. Do you see how it's pretty much exponential? 
It has been exponential. But probably that is because of the rate of testing. The rate of, like, you can't have a confirmed coronavirus case without having a test. So as the rate of testing increases, the rate of, the amount of cases increase. Um, so um, I, I feel like what's happening with Donald Trump is he's deciding we lost to the coronavirus. And since we lost, this whole 14 days to stop the spread thing is a, sh a show. And now we have to protect the economy because Donald Trump and Dan Patrick both have said the economy can't keep going without um, us taking extreme measures. And that's that, that might be true. Um, it really could be. Actually, it is true. No matter what, it's true. Because either we fight the coronavirus and we embrace socialism in a lot of ways, but even then we have to worry about the real estate market collapsing, or we accept the coronavirus and we embrace our economy, but then we still have to worry about the economy collapsing. So, I don't know. But no matter what, our hospitals are going to get overwhelmed. Because, but, but one way, more of us die. The other way, we risk economic death. So, yeah, it's a, it's a complicated situation. The entire world's going to have to deal with it. Um, if you think the United States is going to have a problem, you have no idea how much worse it's going to be in... In, in densely populated places like Nigeria um, with, with weaker healthcare systems. But, um, so, does that mean that I am uh, against Donald Trump's plan to reopen the economy and to get things back to normal right away? Do you think I'm against it? Obviously I am. I mean, there's a, there's a reason I said it's going to take two years to beat this thing. And during those two years, we're going to have to become the greatest socialist of all time because that's my beliefs. That that's what I believe. And I believe that people need to stop hoarding and they need to think, okay, can I get food? Can like, am I cold? Am I freezing to death? Okay. I'm okay. I'm content, but I don't know how to convince everyone to work as a team because we have a president who is a divider in chief. The president divides us and it's hit it. And I feel like it's for so long. He's been a divider. And it's going to be really hard for him to unite everyone behind a common cause, which is um, socialism and, and doing nothing and hurting our economy.